So it really has to start out with my life experience. Um, most of my life, I've been between two worlds. One is my family, and the other is my friends, school, job, community. I think a lot of us kind of have that dynamic. In my particular case, my family is filled with people of color. And race is a daily experience for them. Um, it's been a cause of, an ongoing cause of suffering, violence, joblessness, mistreatment, disrespect. Um, it's been very pr prominent. And yet in the white world, that's a part of my, um, my other world, it's, uh, it's more like race is a footnote. It's hardly ever seen and even more rarely mentioned. So maneuvering in these two worlds hasn't been very easy. Um, there was a time where I tried to build a bridge between the two worlds. I thought, if I can explain to folks what's going on in this world over here, they'll be motivated to try to do something to change what's so clearly, terribly, horribly wrong. But what I discovered was, more often than not, I would get challenged. Oh, oh, are, are you sure it's racism? Uh, maybe they're just having a bad day. Um, are you sure you're not imagining that? Or I'd get what was sometimes even worse, which was total silence. So over time, I learned to stop talking about it. Um, so fast forward a number of years, I started working at CDS Consulting Co-op. Um, I love co-ops. <laughs> I just have to say that. I love co-ops. So intrinsically, I understood that in order to survive and thrive in the world, I needed to be part of a tribe. And um, with co-ops, I have found my people. You are my people. And yet, there is one thing about being those people is that most of them don't actually understand or know anything about my other world <coughs> either. So, so in this, this was the context. <laughs> they don't understand, but they care about me and want to listen to me and care about what I have to say. So it's in this context that I came up with the idea for my article, which is titled, so, you're, so our co-ops are mostly white, now what? So I have to say, when I came up with this title, I didn't have a clue what I was going to say. <laughs> and um, when it came time to sit down and write it, I actually underwent a lot of stress about it. And there was a, I was torn. Um, here I had an opportunity to reach lots of people, hundreds maybe, who were working passionately about something I really cared about. Um, and I, but I feared about what I might say and how it would work. So I felt that the, op the article could be an opportunity to build a bridge between two worlds that would benefit both of them. And it felt like kind of an overwhelming burden. <laughs> if you can imagine, you know, me sitting, I was actually at dance camp trying to write this article. Um, so I thought, what if I shared about my own experience? What if I wrote about that? And then I remembered my past, uh, not so good uh, things that happened there and thought, well, you know, I would probably be discounted, disrespected, I'm not going to convince anybody. The people who would understand me would be people who already understood the situation. And um, as much as I wanted self-expression, though, I wanted to be a force for change. And so I thought if I had just one thing to ask white cooperators, what would it be? And in the end, the question was, question what you know about people of color. Question what you think you know about people of color and educate yourselves. And I felt like if I could get that across, we might be able to start talking the same language and some change could happen. So that's essentially what I said in my article. So I've learned through my many white friends that they, like me, learned their attitudes about race in a deeply racist society. We all drank the Kool-Aid. So I had the benefit of life experience to pull the wool away from, away from my eyes. So I was able to like go, whoa, this isn't like what they said. Um, but even then, it's hard to accept. It is really hard to accept. Particularly in my case, learning I not only suffer from racism, but I benefit from it. My light skin and ability to talk in a white, well-educated dialect has opened a lot of doors for me that I know have been closed to other people. So I've gotten a lot of positive feedback about my article. <laughs> which has been great. Um, part of me says, well, you know, will it make a change? Is it making a difference? And then I think, you know, if one person has a different thought about one thing, um, I think I'll feel successful. So um, I believe in the ability of people to change and the potential for healing. And so I want to thank you for listening. Thank you.